you identify heavily with what you see around yourself. And whether that's going well or bad is what is dictating how you feel about your ability to create reality. So in this state, you were and and are even still sometimes because we can slip into this way of thinking. It's where we have this victim way of being that my happiness, my ability to succeed, everything is dependent on something outside of me, whether that be the government, my church, my family, so on and so forth. From there, when this door starts to open that, hey, actually, I might have an ability to experience something different than what I grew up with or what I thought was possible. Have you been feeling the call and know that there is something more in this episode of euphoric evolution? I'm going to dive into your spiritual journey. I want to start to number one, give you some language, some orientation, some understanding around where you are on your spiritual journey, but also to help you navigate because you are in previously uncharted territory, not completely uncharted. There have been mystics and gurus and spiritual teachers, monks, etc., who have gone through this journey before. However, where we are going as a human race really requires something different. And that something different looks like actually staying present and impactful in the 3D realm, not just going on this spiritual journey and hiding away in some cave for the rest of your life. But what is really required are conscious leaders, we will call them new earth leaders, who are very grounded, who understand how to take spiritual insights, conscious expansion, and apply it in real world ways. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's talk about where you've been. So if you are a conscious growth seeker, if you are a a spiritual high performer. There's so many things that we can call you. The title doesn't really matter. Now you likely had a challenging upbringing, a challenging upbringing, whether that was filled with trauma, whether you just never felt like you fit in. Maybe you had certain spiritual gifts that uh, were demonized because of your religious upbringing, or you were in spaces that were uncomfortable, that didn't fit you. And likely because of those experiences, you wanted something more, something different than what you grew up experiencing. And so you probably from a very early age had a knowing, right? So clue number one that this <laughs> is you had a knowing from a very early age that you are not just here to work a nine to five and crawl into a hole and eventually die. That the idea of, you know, just existing, just kind of being on the hamster wheel wasn't for you that knowing for you probably has been for happening for a while, if not your entire life. However, we are from a really young age, kind of indoctrinated or taught that our purpose here is to achieve, 
to hit a high level of success. And I'm not going to demonize that because part of that was your work here and is your work here. But wait, there's more, right? There's like a level of depth. So because of the experiences that you had in your childhood, your environment, so on and so forth, you likely saw achievement, success as your way out of the pain and the trials and tribulations that you were experiencing. So this is where you likely started with the like traditional ideas of goal setting, like I'm going to go to college, I'm going to get a degree, I'm then going to get married, or I'm going to, you know, the typical blueprint of what we think success looks like. And maybe somewhere along the way, you probably came across personal development first. The idea that actually I have inner work that needs to be done in order for me to become successful. I have to start looking at things differently than the people that I was surrounded with, because if I just follow what they said, I'm going to have the same reality or the same experiences that they had, right? If you just listen to your parents, for example, and what they tell you about you have to work hard, you have to X, Y, Z, and then you follow their blueprint, most likely you are going to have the same kind of life that they had. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with hard work. It's almost like the door opened a little bit that, hey, there's something else possible for me. And usually that first door is personal development, like the traditional personal development space. Now, as you're going along <laughs> on the personal development track, or maybe even, you know, started seeing a therapist or psychologist and you're going through the, the mainstream ways, at some point you may have come across law of attraction and or manifestation. And this is where personal development and also the importance of your energy in creating the success that you still have the goal of, this is where you began to tap into your power. You were in victim consciousness where the level of your experience, the level of success that you can experience, so on and so forth, all of that is being determined by external circumstances, by the state you grew up in, in the community that you're in, by your family upbringing. You identify heavily with what you see around yourself and whether that's going well or bad is what is dictating how you feel about your ability to create reality. So in this state, you were and, and are even still sometimes because we can slip into this way of thinking. It's where we have this victim way of being that my happiness, my ability to succeed, everything is dependent on something outside of me, whether that be the government, my church, my family, so on and so forth. From there, when this door starts to open that, hey, actually, I might have an ability to experience something different than what I grew up with or what I thought was possible. And this is where you then start tapping into creator consciousness, creator consciousness of, okay, if I work hard, if I plan, if I discipline myself, then I can be a powerful creator. I can create up to a certain degree, up to a certain level, right? So you started to become aware that there was something else at play. This is where the understanding of oh wait, my energy is affecting reality starts to come into play. And at first, when you start to have this awakening, this is also where a lot of people start to have an actual awakening, like that shift from creator to manifester. This is where spiritual awakening happens. 
So if you are like, I, I already experienced a spiritual awakening, you awakened to the fact that you are a manifester. That can be challenging to wake up to, right? By the way, it's not just like an easy, ah, oh, I just came to this realization. But it can, because we start to have this understanding that there's an energy at play, that there's something beyond what we can touch and feel, it's so much more vast. There's so much, there's so much more that is intangible than is tangible. There's so much more that is spiritual than physical. So this does lend itself to create a perspective of kind of being airy, <laughs> being so focused on energy that we were like, well, screw being human, right? I want to be this limitless version of me. And that can only get us so far because we chose to be human. We wanted to be human for a reason. You wanted to be human. There's a perfection in being an imperfect human being. So when you became a manifester, when you really started tapping into your energy, part of being a manifester is this concept that if I be this version of myself, and then that will cause me to do the aligned things. And ultimately I will have the kind of success that I wanted to experience when I started this journey. Anyways, you can apply directly at the royalshaman.com and I cannot wait to get to know you and really get to support you in your expanded consciousness. I'll see you next time.